Hey, this is Ryan. Today I want to show you how to wire up the Whizbang Junior to your kid or your classic. I want to introduce you to the Whizbang Junior and the shunt. So this is the Whizbang Junior right here, this this circuit board if you will. This piece right right here mounted to the shunt with the wire on it. This is a standard 500 amp 50 millivolt shunt made by Deltec. It's one that we use in all of our e-panels. It's very common. Any of our distributors will have it, most likely, right on the shelf. Um, one of the things I want to point out is this purple wire right here, violet colored wire. This wire points towards the battery. And what that means is that on the shunt, you have two big studs, two big bolts here, if you will. And what this is, this bolt is for the battery. So only the battery connects to this side. This bolt over here is for the inverters and all the loads. So the wire points towards the battery, the battery goes on this side of the shunt. If you put other things on this side of the shunt, like an inverter or a charge controller, the shunt can't accurately, accurately measure the current across it. What it does is it uses these little fins down in here to measure a very minute voltage drop across these two terminals. And then the Whizbang Junior calculates that into amperage. So if you was to put loads on the battery side, or a charge controller on the battery side, it's going to throw all your numbers off. So the battery goes here, everything else goes on this side. Just remember the purple wire points towards the battery. Now, I want to show you how to wire up the uh, kid for the Whizbang Junior. And what you're looking at here is the inside of the wiring compartment on the kid. And you'll notice right in here is a little terminal block. Now I'm going to zoom in to get a better view of that. Let's get right in there. There we go. Now you can see that terminal block really well. And what this is, this is a no, no, no tool terminal block. Spring loaded terminal block, if you will. You'll notice on the circuit board, it's silk screened Whizbang Junior. So the Whizbang Junior is the top, top slot, if you will. Now when I say it's no tool, what that means is you take a, a small screwdriver, your finger, fingernail, just about anything, pushing on the white piece right there, and you slide the wire in the hole you let go of the white piece, and voila, you're done. And uh, that that concludes wiring up the Whizbang Junior for the kid. It really is that easy on this in this case. Now to remove it, you take the tool, push in on the white thing, and remove the wire, and you're done. So now I want to show you how to do this on the Classic. So to do this, I'm going to have to move the camera, so hopefully we don't make you too seasick here. Hold on one second. All right, now I want to... Uh, Get a good close-up of the block. There we go. Now I'm going to zoom out and show you the circuit board so you can kind of get a, a, an idea of where that block is. So as you can see, this is the internals of the Classic. This is your Ethernet jack. This is your temperature probe for the batteries. USB jack down here. The blue terminal block where you do your wiring. And then the terminal block that we're interested in is right at the very bottom in the middle. Now I'm going to zoom back in. And there we go. Now you'll notice this terminal block. And from left to right, this is auxiliary 2 plus on the left, auxiliary 2 minus, auxiliary 1 minus, and auxiliary 1 plus. You can see right here on the circuit board, it calls out auxiliary 1 plus and minus. Over here it calls auxiliary 2 plus and minus. So we're really looking for this very first screw. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that our wire is twisted up good. You know, just just spin the wire around. Just make sure there's no frayed wires hanging out of it. Or, and then we're going to install that into the first hole. I'm going to take our small screwdriver and tighten that screw down. And there you go. I'm sorry about the focus there. But as you can see, we're installed in the first hole, not the second one. Now something I want to point out on both controllers is what they're doing is they're sending out some some 12 volt voltage out to the Whizbang Junior to actually you know charge it up and make it do what it's got to do. So if there was a strayed wire here that got stuck into the second jack, remember that's negative, that will actually short out the processor on the unit and what will happen is it will reboot. So if you end up getting into the programming and you turn on auxiliary 2 for Whizbang Junior and you notice that it starts rebooting the classic or the kid, uh, stuck in an infinite loop, if you will, 
You want to come back and revisit this wire and make sure you didn't get a loose strand up in there. Something else I want to point out on the Classic is that these two jumpers have no bearing on auxiliary 2. These two jumpers are for auxiliary 1 to switch it between 12 volts or a relay contact only. So again, on the Classic, to recap, all you have to do, wire it into the very first screw on the left, and on the kid, you wire it into the top push pin on the auxiliary contact, and it's well marked on the circuit board on the kid, whiz -bang Jr. And for the programming of these, please see the other videos that we've done labeled Programming My Classic to use the Whizbang Jr. or Programming My Kid to use the Whizbang Jr. Thank you for watching.